Hi, my name's Leo and I'm a boat builder and a sailor and I'm on a mission to rebuild and restore this 111 year old classic sailing yacht Tally Ho. Now this week we're working towards being able to move the boat to Port Townsend and before we do that I want to get the timber of the hull, the frames and the planks sealed both inside and out. Sealing the planks on the outside requires quite a lot more fairing and plugging and so on, but sealing the planks on the inside um, is relatively easy and can be done straight away. So that's what we're gonna start with. And the sooner this timber is sealed, the slower and the less it's actually gonna shrink. So we're trying to do that as soon as possible. Now David and Rowan have already gotten a couple of coats of varnish on the inside of the planks. They got that done while Pete and I were corking a couple of weeks ago. Now they just sealed the inside of those planks uh, to try and stop them shrinking and have the seams opening up. But we do want to seal the frames as well as the planks. Um, and actually we've noticed recently uh, just a few clenchings on the insides of the rivets becoming loose. And we think that's actually because some of the frames are still shrinking a little bit. Um, because of the sunlight coming through the transparent roof of the shed and hitting the frames all day. Now we can tighten up those rivets, that's not a problem, uh, but we do have to do that before we plug the holes on the outside of the boat. So the plan at the moment is to seal the frames with varnish to help reduce the movement, uh, cover up the boat so there's no sunlight getting in anymore, um, and then we can repeen all the rivets which need attention, and then we can plug up the holes on the outside of the boat and work towards the paint job. This is where I really excel, you know, finish work. Where I really shine. Pete shine the stein. Pete stein the shine. <laughs> Steiny shine. Shiny stein, that's what they call me. For sealing the inside of the boat, we're using a product called Le Tonquinois, or Tonky Tonk, as we tend to call it around here. It's a very traditional varnish based on uh, linseed oil and tongue oil, I think, um, and it's quite forgiving and it's very soft. Um, and what that means is that uh, when wood moves around underneath it, it's less likely to crack and split and more likely to just move with the wood. It also means it can be very, very long lasting. And I'm hoping that by varnishing the inside of the boat, with this stuff uh, it can last for many decades. Um, I have seen boats uh, over a hundred years old um, with some of their original varnish um, still on the inside of the hull. That old style of varnish does tend to last very well. It's not quite as glossy or hard um, but in a place where it's not going to get much wear and it's not going to get much UV um, and you can't access it to repair it, it can be a really really good choice. So I'm hoping that's going to work out. So we are uh, applying the, well, yet another coat of varnish to uh, the frames and the stringers um, to add on to the layers of varnish that we put onto the planks already. Holy moly, this is the fourth coat going on the planks. And the frames and the stringers, uh, this is their second coat.
It is a rather long process. Um, there's a lot of surface area in this boat to sand down in between each coat. That includes sanding it with uh, sandpaper and then wiping it down with denatured alcohol to remove any particulate and then going ahead and varnishing. So it can take a while, but uh, the four of us were able to knock it out uh, usually within a day, cleaning and painting, or cleaning and varnishing. And then sanding takes another day. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's slow, but we're getting close. I think it looks fantastic. It all just melts together now. Looks great. <clears throat> Gonna show how much this sucks to the camera. We've just been doing a final check on all the rivets. Um, it may seem like uh, it may seem like a lot to some people, and it it was a lot for us, but. Um, but it was really important to go over pretty much every single rivet on the boat um, before we put bungs in on the outside. So we are working on finishing up the exterior of the hull. And so we wanted to get bungs and filler in. Um, but before doing that, we wanted to be able to buck any, any loose rivets. We did notice that with the sun beating down inside the hull here, um, we, we think we may have had a little bit of shrinkage in our frames still. Um, and it, it, you know, there was just, spotty rivets uh, throughout the hall that, that had wiggly clench rings. Um, not a big deal, um, just considering we're, we were planning on doing a, a final check of them all anyway. Um, so we, we're still dealing with a little bit of movement in the hall, um, which we've tried to put an end to by sealing everything inside the boat. So frames, planks, insides of planks, frames, stringers. Um, to, to seal that wood up and, and uh, keep it from losing any more moisture. Um, in addition to that, we've tarped off the deck to keep that sun from, from beating down onto the inside of the hull. Now that we've got the inside of the hull pretty well sealed, and it looks pretty great in there, I think, um, the next step is to start working on the outside and working towards a coat of paint. But there's a lot to do before then. Um, so we got to plug up all the holes and we got to do a lot more fairing. Um, the fairing that we did before, Although it seemed like a lot and it took a while, it was really only the beginning stages of fairing um, and the boat might have looked good uh, to the sort of casual eye um, on, with bare wood on it, but once it's painted, um, it'll be a lot more obvious where it's unfair. I'm going to start working a little bit on the longboards, but I think pretty soon we're going to plug everything up um, and then do most of the longboarding uh, after the plugs are trimmed. Now a long board is essentially a long board. Um, it's a, a sanding backing pad basically, uh, which has a sort of just the right amount of flex in it that it can um, sort of bend around the curves of a boat, um, but it's not so flexible that it's actually gonna follow small indentations in the hull. And because of that, uh, it automatically sands away the high spots and leaves the low spots um, until everything is even and fair. Um, they're notoriously painful to use, hence their nicknames uh, as a torture board. 
There are some places where we still have to do some planing on the hull as well, mainly down in the broads. And those are actually very difficult to fare, um, especially with the long boards because the Angelique timber is so much harder than the Wana. It's really hard to describe, but when you're sanding Wana with a long board, you can just feel it actually having an effect. You can see the dust coming off and you really actually make decent headway pretty quickly. But when you get onto the Angelique, that's the timber we use for the broads and the shear stroke, it just doesn't do anything. You, you can just, you know, it just scratches it, but it doesn't really remove any material. So um, it's going to be challenging to figure out how we can get that fair. Of course, it's way below the waterline. It doesn't have to be as perfect as the top sides, um, but it would be nice if it could be vaguely fair at least. Some people might be wondering why we're doing so much more fairing um, and there's there's a lot of reasons to that. Uh, our, our first round of fairing that you saw a couple videos ago was mostly 80% a, a of the fairing to, to make to smooth out the planks to make caulking or corking uh, easier. Um, if the planks were all lumpy, your, your irons don't roll in the seams right, it's a big pain in the ass. So you, you want a nice, you know, you want a fairly smooth surface there um, to make corking go, go uh, a lot easier. Uh, in addition to that, um, in the corking process, uh, as those planks compress, as the cotton's driven into them, um, the between two planks, that seam uh, may become proud on one side, the top or bottom. Um, pushing it out of fair. Um, not gonna, I can assure you that the planks are not getting pushed together and then pulled off the framing. Um, they're getting compressed and that wood is pudging out there just a little bit. And it's, it's minimal, um, but it will show when we do a paint job on it, when we do filler or, or seam compound um, and a paint job. Um, and that long board is really gonna get any ripples out, any uh, slight deviations, little, little humps and bumps. Um, it will make a tremendous difference when we do put paint on the boat. So you may be wondering why we're plugging some of the holes but not all of the holes and the reason for that is basically that um, because the planks were different thicknesses when we put them on before they were fared which was to do with how we were shaping them to fit the frames um, not all of the fastening holes are going to be deep enough for us to get a full plug in there we're hoping that it's just going to be a handful of these holes which are so uh, shallow that we're going to just put filler in them instead of a actual wooden plug but because we've got more fairing to do we don't want to plug up the slightly shallow ones until we've done all our fairing because if we plug them up and then uh, take more material off that plug could get very thin but you wouldn't realize it ideally of course it would be better to have all our fastening holes deep enough to take a wooden plug um, but we just didn't quite get that right when we were drilling all the holes it's really not worth the effort of taking out, re-drilling and resetting a bunch of rivets for. 
We'll just use a filler in the really shallow holes um, and that won't even be noticeable after the paint job is done, hopefully. The disadvantage of filler and the reason that we use wooden plugs when we can uh, is that the wooden plug moves with the plank and the filler tends not to. So, you know, there is a chance that you, you will see uh, sometimes the filler through the paint, uh, either being a little shallow or a little proud. Um, and I suppose an outside chance as well that it could eventually one day fall out if there's too much expansion and contraction over time and that creates a, a loose uh, sort of filler plug that will fall out. But that's pretty unlikely and a lot of boats do use filler. In fact, this boat originally had filler over all of her fastenings. So we've been gluing plugs into the fastening holes in the hull, uh, plugs or bungs if you prefer. Um, and Rowan has been making some Angelique plugs um, to go in the Angelique planks because it's better to use the same timber uh, for the plugs as the planks. There's not all that much to say about plugs. Um, everyone's got an opinion about them. Um, some people I'm sure will be saying you have to glue them in with varnish um, or you have to put the glue in the hole first. Um, or you, you know, there's various tricks and ways of uh, making it more efficient when you're doing a lot of them, but basically they're just plugs and it doesn't matter. You just put them in with some glue and it's fine. <laughs> plugs never cause a problem really. Trimming the plugs after the glue is set um, is again, a pretty simple, um, but there is a technique to it and you'd be surprised at, um, you know, how long it can take uh, if you don't have the sort of the right technique. I mean, there's lots of different ways of doing it. My favorite way is to use a chisel and just to um, basically uh, knock it off with the grain, first of all, until you're down to a reasonable depth. Um, you don't want to do that uh, too close to the face because the grain can dive under and it splits out underneath uh, the surface of the plank. So I get it down to within an eighth or so, and then um, the fastest way I find is to shave the plug across the grain. You have to use a very sharp chisel, um, but you can very easily slice across the grain and then it won't split out and you can uh, just shave it down nice and flush. And uh, once you get that technique, you can do it very quickly. Shaving plugs is, uh, I think, one of the most satisfying and enjoyable jobs. Um, in fact, all this week, all this monotonous work, um, although some people hate it, I actually love it um, just because it's a, a really nice way to just sort of switch off. The same with the corking, to be honest. Uh, you get into the rhythm of something um, and just switch your brain off and get into it instead of having to sort of make decisions every five minutes. But trimming plugs is definitely particularly satisfying. So this is my office and uh, I thought I should show you guys uh, because I spend a lot of time here but you never see me here. Um, but this is where I uh, edit these videos. Um, spending many hours on that takes about 30 hours probably on average to edit one of these videos. Um, and I do that through usually Thursday and Friday, um, the, you know, the days just before it's released on a Saturday. But I also spend a lot of time here sourcing materials, sourcing timber, uh, sourcing tools, um, arranging and organizing volunteers and crew, uh, replying to thousands of emails, doing social media, managing finances, um, making arrangements for sort of all the next stages of the project. So I mentioned organizing crew and we got a bit of a change of crew coming up. Um, Pete's staying of course, but um, David and Rowan who have both been here a really long time and have both been amazing hard workers and great part of the team and 
just great to have around. Um, they're both off, uh, both back to their sort of respective families. But I do have some more lined up. Um, gonna have a couple of people coming, but there's gonna be a sort of a week or so gap. And so uh, I actually got a local guy, Cody, um, coming to help for a week or two. And Clark, the pilot who you guys should know by now, um, is uh, just popping in for a couple of days. He's got a couple of days off um, from his uh, flying job. So uh, it has finally come time for me to say my goodbyes here to Telly Ho and the rest of the crew. It's been like uh, just an absolute joy. I've learned so much and not about, not just about boat building, but about a whole slew of things. And yeah, this has really been a, an awesome privilege. I am, however, headed back to the East Coast to re-catch up with my family who I haven't seen uh, in a long time. Uh, as well as take on a new cooking position working in Washington DC uh, with a friend of mine actually uh, and I'm really looking forward to that so it's a bit of a bittersweet moment here right now. Hi, um, my name's Cody. I'm a local here in the area. I'm a fly fishing guide and a cook, and Leo called me up to help out for a couple weeks in between volunteers, and I'm proud to help out and honored to be here and have a role in this, so it's awesome. Yeah, you bet. Uh, hi everyone, my name's Clark. Um, I haven't been around in a while, but you may remember me from such exciting episodes as Grinding Bronze and also Grinding Bronze. But anyway, I had to go disappear for a while to go back to work uh, with the airlines, but had a few days off, so I decided I'd come check out Tally Ho, see all the cool progress they made, and then Leo promptly put me on the torture boards to sand all day which was a ton of work but pretty rewarding too because you get to see a lot of progress get made in a period of a day and it's really neat to see Tally Ho get, get all planked and then get smooth and prep for paint. So it's exciting to be back and hopefully I can be back a bit more to help out. I get why they call it a torture board, but it's, I don't know, it, it's rewarding. It's one of those things where you get some form of fairly instant gratification for it. What are you talking about? I like it. <laughs> I like making things pretty. All right. You know? Well, my shoulders hurt now. <laughs> from, 
<laughs> today while trying to get up and down off the staging, I thought a lot about what it would be like to be an old person and whether or not it would feel this way. <laughs> It'll feel that way. <laughs> It'll feel this way? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Longboarding. Huzzah! <laughs> So I want to talk a little bit about sourcing timber, in particular the timber for the deck, um, because this is something I've been working on for months and months and months, and I haven't uh, yet found what I need. Uh, the deck ideally should be teak, but it is a solid deck, there's no ply or fiberglass, so it's uh, thick pieces of wood, and that is a huge amount of teak, um, because teak is extremely, extremely expensive. So I've been looking to try and find an affordable and sustainable way to get that much teak and it's pretty much impossible in the lengths I need. In those lengths it's gone up now to uh, about $50 a board foot and uh, you, when you need uh, upwards of 1200, 1300 board feet you can uh, work out how much that would cost. So the next best option for uh, a laid deck um, in my opinion is probably Alaskan yellow cedar, but it's still hard to find a really nice Alaskan yellow cedar in the lengths I need um, because ideally it would be nice to have air dried timber. So if there's anyone out there who knows of someone who has a huge stash of Alaskan yellow cedar uh, um, and wants to sell it to this project, I would pay a very good price for it. But don't get in touch if you've just got a few boards lying around. I do need um, at least a thousand board feet. Uh, it has to be eight quarter clear vertical grain, air dried at lengths of at least 25 foot and over, uh, ideally 30 foot and over. If it's out there, I'd love to find it and buy it. If it's not, I'll probably have to use kiln dried Alaskan yellow cedar, um, which will be okay. It will still make a very, very nice deck. We've gotten the hole fair enough to put the rest of the bungs in. I'm doing the last couple bungs and Cody here is doing the uh, the goo. The goo? He can elaborate. <laughs> the goo. What is it Cody? It's fairing compound for anything that's too shallow for a bung so we can get everything nice and fair and pretty. I'm headed out everyone. I'll be heading back to the East Coast where I have a project lined up. I'm gonna get that thing done and hopefully I'll be right back. Okay, well that's about it for now. Um, this is uh, one of the sort of more frustrating parts uh, of a build or a rebuild, um, the finishing touches of the hull, uh, there's always a lot of small jobs to do that take a long time so it is taking a while uh, but we are making good progress and hopefully very soon we'll start actually getting paint on and then there's just a couple more things we have to do before we can move the boat. So that's exciting and I'm looking forward to setting up in Port Townsend. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching and a massive thank you to everyone who has donated or otherwise supported the Tally Ho project. It does make a huge difference. It means we're able to keep on doing this work. It means I'm able to keep on making and editing these videos um, and I really, really appreciate it. So thank you and I'll see you next time. Cheers.